Hello everyone, this is Mini Ninjas here. Uh, for today's little unique episode just before Christmas, we're going to be looking at something I've honestly never looked at before, period, being the Marvel Legends line of figures, starting off with the Toy Spider-Man, aka the Japanese Spider-Man, for those that are uh, not so versed on that. Now in this case, you and I just uh, notice the little packaging here is kind of more of an eco-friendly packaging they started not that long ago, which for those that aren't familiar with them, it basically just the bit is they're not using any plastic at all in there. It's all strict cardboard as well as a little bit of paper bag kind of holding everything in place. Which I might have a little issue with as I'm going to be mentioning certain things later in the video. Which might have been caused due to the nature of this packaging kind of not overly securing things. Despite their best intentions. As you can see, getting the figure out there. Trying to get this standing for the uh, initial uh, weight. Not the initial weight, the initial measurement here. But I'm not having such a good time right out of the box, which is kind of a bad omen of things to come. Now that we're able to get the figure standing up alright, we can see that the figure is indeed about just shy of six and a half inches. Uh, it's worth noting the Marvel Legends figures, as far as I know, tend to be a six inch line, so that is appropriate. In terms of the actual figure presentation, eh, from initial looks, everything seems to be looking pretty good and hunky dory, but that starts changing pretty quickly on. It's worth noting there's actually a lot of different knocks and like marks or I should say paint chipping or paint rub that are kind of all over the various symbols on the back here which is kind of interesting because frankly speaking that's actually rather surprising. Unfortunately I don't think the packaging itself is right now suited to really protect the paint job or perhaps this is some of the issues I've been hearing in general with a lot of Hasbro products as of late. Uh, speaking of which as we're trying to do the articulation test here uh, it's worth noting that the neck was supposed to move both up and down as well as left and right didn't quite do that. Underneath the shoulder there you can see there's some absolute paint rub on the one that I was able to get to move the other shoulder is completely seized up at the moment there's supposed to be waist swivels on both sides technically that will be functional the elbows themselves are supposed to be I believe double hinged they are all functioning the basically every joint that I can get to move on this figure just to give you a heads up they move but they're incredibly stiff or they're completely seized up for example, that elbow is also not moving. That entire arm is basically stuck except for the wrist, which is super tough to move. Ab crunch. The ab crunch is functional. Very hard. I feel like I should be able to get more range, but it is functional. Uh, the waist swivel I don't demonstrate here, but it worked just fine. It's worth mentioning. Uh, the actual leg spread. Not the biggest spread, but everything worked and it was able to move up and back without too much hassle. The knee joints are supposed to be double hinged knees. On the right one, I can only get the top hinge to work. The bottom one was completely seized up. That's what it should look like if it was working properly, but no go, completely didn't want to look or work at all. And from the looks of it, there was just like a small residue that's between the joints, as if there was either paint dried in there, or adhesive, I'm not sure what, but it wasn't budging. In terms of the ankles, as you can see here, yep, they're still just as stiff as before. Also looks like there's some worn out plastic in there for that matter, but they are functional. All in all, I think more than three quarters of the figure's joints were either super stiff, if not outright seized. Suffice to say, I'm not impressed by how the articulation works on this particular toy. So I actually had to go do a lot of work in order to get it to this point. This is after a first set of treatments on there, namely a lot of hot water dipping in there, the can of warm up the figure to get it working, or kind of moving there, along with a lot of silicone oil on the various joints to kind of get a little more motion. And even then, it still wasn't full. I actually had to put this thing in the freezer to try to crack whatever the adhesive was, as well as when that failed, I actually had to basically run this thing under a hot hot air gun in order to finally break the seal and get that knee moving, along with the rest of the joints. And even now, it is still super stiff. All the other joints, well, more functional, just from, uh, just basically, for lack of a better term, a lot of moving to try to get them to uh, remain movable, they're still incredibly stiff joints. Now, for posing, that might be really good, but in terms of actually getting them into the pose or just trying to get there, it's not great. It's, in the hell, it even feels like the actual toys joints are all ratchety, which is something I was totally not expecting. Suffice to say, yeah, I'm not big on the articulation Marvel Legends figures, if this is a prime example of what it looks like. Let's move on to the accessories. Maybe we have something a little more pleasant to talk to. And, well, this is a thing. You have two different sizes of webs here. The webs themselves are unpainted, uh, flexible plastic on there, fairly inoffensive, but I'm not sure what those are really useful for because there's no adhesive, there's no nothing going on there. 
Now, in terms of the spider string here, which is supposed to attach to the spider protector, uh, which, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the spider protector, the thing on the wrist. Actually, that is really well detailed, and you can have an even little Spider-Man that is on there that was uh, fairly well handled for the decal. Uh, the spider string itself is about 9 inches long, and I think in this case it's supposed to either wrap around his wrist, or actually, no, that's what the SH Figure Arts version does, which this one doesn't. And, honestly, it doesn't really stick in anything because these are closed fists. Which, stop me if you heard this before, the wrist joints are incredibly stiff. At least in this case I can kind of understand why, because, as you might notice in a second here, what I'm trying to demonstrate, the hinges themselves are the... Yep, they're bent. The things are actually a little warped, definitely could be fixed with a little bit of hot water in order to bend them in place, but the fact that I have to fix that too is just... This is just getting a little bit of nonsense at this point, folks. In terms of decals, at least they're still fine on there. But, uh, yeah, I'm, let's just demonstrate how hard it is to get there. You have to really pull this on there, and I was actually kind of worried I was going to damage the joint at that point. But, yes, you can kind of get that on there. This is me trying to figure out if I could just kind of slip them on, or slip on the spider string on there. But then I realized it's bigger than the hand, so it's kind of a moot point. Yeah, I'm not sure what this string is supposed to be useful for in this case. Even the box just seems to kind of loosely show it hanging on there. It's not a great thing. And we have to save this thing somehow. One second. Incredibly Bronwyn and inflexible retail figure, Spider-Man. Well, folks, that's about the best payoff I can offer you on this one because, I'm sorry, between paint chipping and flaking off out of the box, almost no functioning articulation worse than most bootlegs, and these for accessories... I've got nothing left to talk about here. I can't go into Christmas like this. Okay, folks, let's try this again next time. One more video before Christmas, and I promise you, this one will be worth it. See you soon.